Hi, it's Paul Neal from Penn Productions, and for whatever reason, I always see these uh, questions over the years and years about how do you model a book? So I thought it might be worthwhile me modeling a book um, and showing how I would go about doing this. And of course, utilizing the new array modifier in the latest uh, installations of Max, we can then distribute them on shelves and set them up in a scene like this. I currently only have seven objects in the scene that I've created. Uh, I have created a total of about 11 points only that I've modeled, um, and that's 11 not verts or knots in this case and everything else is procedural just like a lot of the work that i do so let's hide this off and we'll um, uh, get started with creating um, you know a book so i'm going to uh, do this in the top viewport and we're going to start with a rectangle uh, to build our book um, you know make sure that we've got it sort of a reasonable size uh, i'm going to look for a book that's going to be uh, maybe 20 centimeters wide i'm working in centimeters in this case and we'll take it down to about that size and uh, i'll just zero this out so we know where it is so to get this started i want to cut this in half because i only want to build half of a book um, so right click convert to edible spline two on the keyboard to get into segments and pick either segment, right click divide or find it down in the list down here, wherever it is. And I'm gonna delete the uh, bottom half of this. And then I'm going to uh, uh, press X and look for the spline mirror tool. Um, so there's all these spline modifiers, so spline mirror and it'll be on the y-axis in this case front to back in the scene because i made it the top viewport it's aligned to world space uh, in this case uh, we probably will have to play with our weld thresholds uh, you'll see some oddities may be happening and you'll wonder why and your weld threshold uh, welding these vertices together will be the cause of it so the next thing we want to do is um, add an extrude modifier and this is where we might see that sort of problem arise as we move forward i want to make the book you know maybe 30 centimeters high uh, to start with and so so far this is our book top viewport again back down to our edible spline we don't need this what i'm modeling is the cover here so uh, we don't need this part here uh, this is going to go away and then we need to ship shape the book uh, let's see if we're getting a shape that we expect if you notice this is solid still and it shouldn't be because there's no center point here to make this a solid so the reason that is again is spline uh, the weld and it's trying to effectively weld it together um, you know along that point and we're going to have to go down and find the uh, the weld threshold that doesn't it's going to weld the other side together properly for us but it's not going to try and weld across this uh, this area here and create it into a solid so I'm going to dial that down carefully until I, I get it to the point where I've got what looks like a book cover now it's single-sided so above the extrude I'm going to add a shell modifier uh, we're going to drop that in and we're going to give it a bit of thickness whatever we uh, decide the uh, book cover should be so uh, it's got a little bit of thickness onto it there and then above that i'm going to add a chamfer modifier and we're going to round out the edges of these a little bit so that obviously causes some grief uh, i just showed wireframe with f4 um, and i'm going to pull this uh, the amount down because that is a complete mess and we're just going to take it down to something that makes a whole lot more sense you can still see it over lapping there so the book is to scale so it might require some pretty small values here if we need that rounder of course we can just add in more segments if we wish uh, to round that out so so far completely procedural let's go back down to the edible spline or completely procedural except for the edible spline uh, down at the bottom down here I'm going to grab the uh, vertex at the bottom and we're just gonna shove that out to get a little bit of bend going here. There's always that little dent here, uh, sort of in the edge of the binding where the, the top uh, folds over. I'm just gonna turn off show end result. You can toggle that with alt uh, tilled, or I guess it's alt, that little tick mark. I don't even know what it's called. It's underneath the tilled. Um, you can toggle that on and off. Uh, I'm gonna right click refine or use it here. And I'm gonna create three points uh, along here. And I'm just gonna move this one down, toggle the show end result back on again and see what I'm getting. And again, you can see that probably right now, chamfer is causing us some grief because you can see that the um, uh, shell is overlapping here. 
Now we might be able to resolve that in two ways. One, you know, moving these uh, points uh, away from each other a little bit more so that it doesn't. Uh, as well in the shell, we could, uh, you know, reduce the amount that it's it's uh, giving us thickness, or we could give ourselves a little bit of inner and outer thickness so that we don't run into those problems, um, you know, just to try and resolve it. But you should be able to resolve it without, um, you know, getting into poly modeling. I just don't want to have to poly model this. So the chamfer then is probably uh, still going to be causing us some grief. And it's causing us grief because, again, it might just be chamfering too much and in too many places. You can see it's chamfering these vertices here. We don't want that. So I'm going to go and dial up the uh, minimum angle to just below 90. So it's only um, uh, handling the angles that are over 90. So we're getting some in here. Maybe we want to uh, see if it'll do that outside one as well. That might be nice. And now we no longer have it uh, doing areas that we just don't want it to, to work on. So we don't have to do it, uh, you know, have to handle this uh, manually. It's going to allow us to be able to dial this in and keep it very procedural. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. Now we need the inner part of the book. So same thing. I'm going to grab a rectangle. Um, I'm going to draw it out. I'm going to align it back. So I use the Alt-A to get to my align tool and click back on the book. I'm going to align X, Y, and Z to pivot, pivot, and drop in the pages. Same thing with this. I'm going to right-click, uh, convert it to an edible spline. Two on the keyboard, do exactly the same thing. Divide, delete the bottom half. Now, we already have here, we already have a spline mirror. So we know that's going to be the same. So I'm going to control and drag that onto the uh, new object here. Um, so it's already mirroring it over. OK, so um, Looks like it brought the uh, chamfer. I had it selected as well, and uh, I didn't need that. Um, I'm going to need the extrude over here. So you can see this is in italics now, the spline mirror. So it's it's uh, being mirrored um, on both objects. It's one modifier. The extrude, I don't want it to be um, uh, instant. So I'm just going to drag and drop it. And the reason I don't want it is the pages shouldn't go right to the top and bottom. Now, for the sake of keeping the pivots in the same place, I want to move my pages up, but I'm not going to move the object because then the pivots are going to be in different places. You'll see why that might matter later. I'm going to go back down to my um, edible spline, show end result. Again, you can toggle it on with the uh, alt tilde and three in the keyboard to go into the uh, you know shape so you can grab the entire spline. And I'm going to move it up. So I'm not moving the pivot. I'm moving a sub object up and uh, choose how much sort of offset I want there. That's going to mean that the um, uh, extrude needs to come down a little bit, you know, so it's uh, it's not qu uh, extruding quite as much. Um, you know, maybe it needs to be, it looks like I've got to have um, maybe a half in there. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then, of course, we're going to have to uh, take a look at moving the pages in and shaping those. So back to the top. And so we can give it you know, grab both of these. I'm going to move those in a little bit, take the middle one and sort of bend the pages in. You'll say, hey, it didn't bend. I have to push it further and further to bend. That's because the interpolation uh, here is set to adaptive and it's seeing it as a near straight line. So it's optimizing. And I'm going to turn that off and uh, let it create them. Now, what you'll also notice when I do that is that, uh, you know, when I hit F4, you can see that the uh, edges are being made or not, okay? And now, of course, this one here as well, I'm going to just click, click, click X, sorry, and I'm going to, uh, you know, round that out a bit. Over here, same thing. I'm going to go and take uh, probably this whole top uh, edge, so two on the keyboard, and just move it down so it fits. And then we want something going on in here. And I'm, so I'm going to say refine and probably refine here and then grab these two and then move them down. Maybe something like this. I'm not quite sure what a book looks like in here. I'd have to go and look uh, bad at me not doing my research. I know um, how the book binding actually comes about. So we can now, um, you know, work with this and 
show the pages in here. So there's our pages being created. And so that is the entirety of a book. So I've modeled about 11 points or so, um, and the, the book is complete uh, at, this, at this stage, and it is all procedural. If we want to lay it out on a shelf, we can then go about using an array modifier. So again, I kept the pivots in the same place because the array modifier is going to do everything around the same pivots. So the new array modifier, you must have the latest versions of Max installed to be able to have that. Uh, it's 2023.2.2, uh, I believe, has the array modifier. Take the count down here. I'm going to bump the count up, and you'll notice my pages aren't staying with the book. Reason being is it's on relative offset, so it's using the thickness of each object to determine how far they should be spread apart. I'm going to change that to total dimension, and then I can um, decide basically how long my bookshelf is going to be. So I can take the length and the Y here and just move it out. And then I can go ahead and decide how many books are going to be on the shelf in this area. Now, it'd be nice if they were spread apart a little bit differently. You know, they had some variations. So along the Y, I can, I can play with a little bit of ram, randomness. Um, I could play with some scale uh, variations, um, you know, on the couple axes. So the books are, uh, you know, a little bit different than each other. You know, not quite the same. We could then uh, rotate them around axes. Uh, not that one. It wouldn't make sense. You know, sort of lean them a little bit on each other or whatever. Um, and we may have to play with those. We might even want to just twist them off on the Z a little bit. And now we can pick and choose how many books we want on that shelf. Of course, we could also go with the height as well. And you can easily go in and make multiple shelves of books so they can, you know, they just cascade up. I'm going to leave that down for simplicity. Let's put some gaps on our shelf. So let's just make our shelf longer and let's put some more books on our shelf. Um, so we've got more books and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to limit where the books are. So I'm going to make a box and I'll just move it down a little bit there and I'll make it see through with alt X so I can see what's going on. You know, this shouldn't render. So one of the things I would do too is uh, right click object properties. I would turn off renderable in case I forget to, uh, you know, make it invisible in the scene when I hit render and come back and realize there's this box everywhere. Same thing. I'm going to stick an array modifier on this, um, you know, and it's going to be along the Y as well. OK, and I can make them along the Y. Same thing. I want to say total dimension and then just, you know, set the dimension. I'm going to move that first one in a bit, maybe somewhere there and total dimension maybe to about there. So I've got books on either end um, and then just take the countdown. So we'll just start with four in this case. Uh, same thing, I want to play with uh, positions and whatnot. But if you notice, I've got books all the way across. Scroll right to the bottom. What you're going to find is there's a remove, cull objects. And so I can select an object. And by default, it calls them into the, um, uh, into the space of those objects. So you can see that wherever this goes, books are, okay, which is pretty cool. Um, we can then play with the uh, variations on this to to vary the, um, the you know the scale, for instance, on them and get more or less books in any given place, which is really nice. And of course, we can um, play around with the uh, you know location variation and how many there are, so we can determine how many books are going to be on our shelf um, if we wanted, or we can invert this. Um, uh, the, the culling. So back to our books uh, and pick the books and we can say invert that so that it's their spacers in between effectively. So now we can pick and choose where those books are going to be in the scene uh, and they're going to be uh, generated. And the last thing we're going to do is we want our books to be different. Uh, we don't want them all the same. So the material IDs will allow us to do that. Now, our pages are all going to be the same. We're all going to be white. So I'm just going to open my material editor, and we're just going to make a physical material here. Hit H just to collapse it down. And it's gray. That's fine. And I'm going to hit A on the keyboard to assign it, and M just to close that back off. So you can see they're all gray now. So. Um, it doesn't matter that the material IDs change on these pages because uh, these pages um, are, uh, uh, 
you know, they've got one material on them. They're not going to have a multi-sub. So, um, you know, this is array modifiers instanced here. Sorry, I'm going to turn off the end result, or sorry, the uh, vertices. We don't need it there. Material ID, let's say we want three different books. So I'm going to set it to three. Okay, so it's going to create material IDs for the three different books. And then I'm going to go in and grab um, the multi sub object material. And we're going to set the number, the count here to three. And we're going to grab uh, three uh, materials. And let's just give these, you know, just some random colors so you can see what's going on. That's going to go into channel one. That's going to go into channel two. Change that, to, uh, you know, whatever bluey green kind of color, and then we'll drop this one in, and that's going to go into three. And this one is going to be, you know, some sort of bluey color, bluey purple color. And you'll see when we apply this multi sub material A to apply it, or you can right click on it, they've now got random. Uh, materials on them so we can randomize the materials we can change the uh, seed on uh, on these uh, uh, you know settings which is really nice so we could completely change up what they look like we could change up the seed on the scale and of course now we can go ahead and and uh, move them up um, so we can set these up um, I'll just go and put them, sorry, three of them, let's say. And same thing here, you'll see that it's not uh, culling any out. Let's go uh, three up as well. And then let's take the, uh, um, uh, these, these objects that are culling our books and we'll push those up into place as well. So, you know, when we hide these uh, and we hide off that, we've got a bookshelf, random colors, you know, random sizes, random orientations, and of course now just bookshelves and whatever else. And again, make that with an array modifier and you're done. There you go.